how I approach life is by the word of God. I have tried the other ways and they didn't work for me. My own thinking, my own ambitions, my own dreams, and my own desires was not the desires of God. And I realize God wants to give me better than what I even want for myself. I like to have some good things for myself, but it's below the standard of God. Amen. What he has really determined for each of us. So in Matthew, you're going to pick up at the 22nd verse. And I'm going to read down to the 28th. And the word of God states, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, true, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thy wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This woman came to Jesus because there was a situation and a challenge she just couldn't deal with. She couldn't handle. And when she came to him, she, she came looking for one help. I can't imagine a mother and her child and her child is grievously in sick and being tormented. And in the natural, a parent will do anything that they can to get their child delivered. Amen. And when she came to Jesus, she, the Bible said when she first told him about it, he ignored her. Paid her no mind at all. Most people would say, you know, <laughs> Jesus, you're not all that in a piece of, piece of toast too. Probably would have got upset with them. But she didn't display any character of disappointment at all, yeah. even when he ignored her. Yeah. I'm not going to say that we we at that level yet. Amen. When somebody ignores us and, and pay us no attention at all, we have a tendency to get angry about it. Yes. And then the disciples jumped on the bandwagon and say, Lord, she cries after us. Well, he, she didn't come to the disciples. She came to Jesus. She was seeking his help. She said, look, look, I, I, my daughter's being grievously vexed, man. And I'm, and I'm at the end of my rope. I done tried everything to get her delivered. And yet she's, she's getting worse. And then he said something to her that would just seem to be so out of place and so condescending. It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And when she heard that, I can imagine her, what was in her mindset and was in her hearing. And, and, and she turned in response to tell you the, 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 the desire that she had, that, that she believed that Jesus was going to ask her request, that she was willing to take the abuse of words and she was willing to take to be made little. Because she knew he could. She knew he could. And she said, true, Lord, but... She said, even the dogs, what a great response. Eat the crumbs 
from his master table, even when he's not offered anything from the main table. He said, just the crumbs is enough to satisfy me. She said, I don't care if you don't come to my home. I don't care if you gave me a hug. I don't care if you answer me, but I, I, just the crumbs was enough to satisfy me. And then Jesus, in response to what she said, says these great words. O oh, woman, great is thy what? Faith. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about great is thy what? Faith. Do you know most Christians really don't live by faith? How can you live by something that you don't understand? I often hear people say, I got faith to get me through. I, I got faith. I got faith. Having faith is not having faith. I'm going to explain to you in a minute. Having faith is not having faith. You say, I got faith. You, you sick on your deathbed. You sick, you sick in your body. Say, I got faith. When you don't understand it, how can you operate in something you don't understand? Most faith teachers have taught faith like it's a toy. The title of my message is Faith is Not a Toy. Tell your neighbor, faith is not a toy. That's why so many Christians are, 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 are being bamboozled and, 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 they, and they, they don't have this relationship with God and they say they're walking by faith. But when you're put to the test, you will find that really they don't know what faith is. We quote the scripture that said faith is the sum of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Yet we don't know what that means. Because they haven't taught faith the way the Bible says it ought to operate. I'm not sick. My body is not an ailment, so I don't need faith for healing. My bills are paid. I don't owe anybody this month. I paid them all. So there's nobody calling my house reminding me that I need to pay bills. So guess what? I don't need faith for that. But when you have a challenge in your life, when you have a challenge in just living, when you have a challenge in that things come upon you, can do you have faith? So we don't know what faith is. Many preachers have taught faith like it's a toy. Oh, I got faith to get a car. I just believe when I go, I'm going to get a car. I have faith. Believe I'm going to get a job. I have faith. Do you realize the Bible don't teach that? The Bible don't teach that. My whole life is, is predicated on applying my faith to what God's will is. Or how to come through my whole life is, is dictated by the word of God. People don't like that. They say, well, God gave you a mind to think for yourself. I've done that. I done that. I done thought for myself. And I'm going to tell you what, I think it for myself that got me in financial difficulty. Thinking for myself, it caused my mind to be in chaos because guess what? I was applying my own human thoughts and your own human thoughts can only carry you so far. Amen. I'm believing God for a right husband, for a good man. He ain't tell you to use your faith for that. He ain't never told you to use your faith to find a husband. He never told you to use your faith to, to provide for yourself. But you said, well, how are we supposed to live? I'm telling I'm going to I'm going to get to it in a minute. Don't rush me. <laughs> you, you, you make life living for God. So, so much pressure. We were talking about a style, but living for God is a lifestyle. But what kind of lifestyle? Uh, living like what? A lifestyle. I live at the set of parameters that's only contained in the word of God. It's not contained in health, self-help books. Amen. And try that. People talking about, well, Satan, the seven strategies say Satan don't have a strategy. He do what he do. That's what he was created to do. He was created to lie, steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he comes to do. There ain't no strategy with that. I don't pray to I don't I don't spend all my time fighting the devil. I don't matter of fact, I don't spend none of my time fighting the devil because I don't give him place. Amen. I'm just saying what the words say. 
Most of your trouble comes as a result of you not obeying God and living what? By faith. But faith in what? I done taught this. I done taught this before. I'm going to keep hammering it until you, until you get it, until you live like champions. Until you realize, man, that God wants the best for you. I, I want the best for me. Somebody say hallelujah. I like to have the best life. Somebody say amen. Man, I like to be happy all the time. Somebody say amen. I'm tired of this roller coaster up one day, down the next. When a challenge comes, I fall apart. And then I call on God after I try to fix it. The whole week I try to turn this thing around and ain't turn around. And then I call on God. That's the wrong, that's the wrong prescribed prescription. You want to be happy all the time? You want to have a good life? I'm going to tell you how to do it. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm going to tell you how to have a good life with nothing. I'm going to tell you how to have a good life and having no money and you want some money. I'm going to tell you how to have a good life when you buy yourself, how to enjoy yourself. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm going to teach you how to have faith in who? Come on now, y'all participate. Have faith in who? But how can you have faith in God when you don't know how to apply it? This woman came, came to Jesus and she ain't going to let nothing deter her from getting her daughter delivered. She is not going to stop. She's not going to give in. But her faith was in something that not many of us really think about. What did she have faith in? What did she have faith in? That Jesus will respond, great is thy faith. I got faith to be healed. No, you don't. I got faith. I got faith. I got faith to get fine. No, you don't. I got faith to heal me from my past. No, you don't. Why don't you? Because the misapplication of faith means emptiness manifestation of receiving. When you don't know how to, to apply faith, you just can't say you have faith and yet you're not obeying God. I got faith, but you don't live the way God tell you to live. You don't forgive. You don't repent of your sins. You still live in the same life you was living before you got saved. Something wrong with that picture. So we're going to talk about talk about this. So let's let's look at the first point of applying faith correctly. Somebody say hallelujah. Turn in your Bibles and you know it. Your Bible should literally just fall to Romans 10, 17. Somebody say hallelujah. Charity laugh because you know we, we don't read it. How many times you done heard this message, sir, this, this sermon? Um, not this sermon, but this, this, this scripture right here, Charity. Hundreds of times. And yet people still don't know how to apply faith what? Properly. The preacher tell you, use your faith to get a car. Use your faith to sow a seed. Use your faith to get healed. Use your faith. Oh, the 12 steps of faith. Oh, I got step number one. You do this, step number two. You do this, step number three. And all this stuff about the 12 steps of faith, the method of faith, how to apply your faith, even say crazy faith, sideways faith, and, and no, not a Christian yet is living really by faith. So, Pastor, you got it wrong. I'm living by faith. Well, if you are, praise God. But if you ain't, let's learn something today. I learned something today. It, it took me, it took, it, I, I, I went through great uh, trauma learning how to live by faith. Long as I had, I kept it. I got faith. Oh, I believe God going to provide all my needs. Well, you know, I had all my needs met. I'm sitting there going, man, you know, am I really living by faith? Because as long as I could see it, man, I didn't need, I, I, I was using false faith. I, it wasn't faith at all. It didn't, it didn't bring no glory to God. None. Most of us come to church, come because we broke, we, we got issues, we got problems. And, and as long as we got these issues and these pressures in life, we come to church, man, and we come to hear the word of God. You know what? And then once God delivers you, guess what? You don't come to church no more. Why are you here? Why are you in church? It should be that we come here, number one, to give God what? Glory. Number two, to fellowship and to hear what? The word of God. Number three, so we don't keep living the same old lifestyle that messed us up in the first place. 
So in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, look what it says. So then faith cometh by what? Hearing. Come on, quote that with me. Faith cometh how? Hearing. You hear a lot of stuff. That don't mean that that brings faith. The God kind of faith. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the God kind of faith. So he's, Paul makes a statement and he said, faith coming how? And now he gives you the second part of the application of how to properly apply faith. And he says, hearing by the word of what? So faith comes by what? And hearing what? So faith is based on what God done said. Are y'all getting this? My whole life, my whole life is, is dictated by this, by this understanding that when I begin to apply faith, I apply how? Properly. I apply how? In truth. I'm honest with myself. Ain't no use you talking about you walking by faith and you still living a life of sin. You're not being obedient to God's word. Come on, you're fooling yourself. God don't get no glory out of that. I'm, you, know, I'm, you know, I have faith, but you're not obeying God. No, they go together. Faith, love, obedience, all uh, uh, go together. So he says, faith come by hearing, hearing what? The word, of God. the word of God. So when I'm sick, how do I, how do I know I have faith to be healed? What, what is my faith in? What do I put my faith in? Well, you know what, I'm praying, I'm praying for the doctor, I'm praying for the physiologist, I'm praying for those who work. How do I know when I'm sick? That, that I'm using my faith properly to be healed. How many people know you've been sick and you wanted God to heal you? How do I properly apply my faith? I'm going to give you some prescribed prescription on how to properly apply, apply your faith so you can conquer in, in every area of your life by applying this principle. Because you say, I got faith. I got faith. God going to heal me. That don't mean you got faith. Tell you what I put my faith in. When I was sick, whether you had a stroke, whether you got heart disease, I don't care what you got. If you follow this, I'm telling you, I'm going to show you some scriptures that's going to prove my point. So if I'm sick, I put my faith in first Peter chapter two, 24. And the Bible said, by his stripes, I am what? So my faith for healing is not me saying I have faith, but my faith for healing is saying I believe what he said in, in his word. I believe that even though I got aches in my body, though my hand is twisted, though my heart could be hurting, though I got arthritis in my leg, I believe that when I put my faith in his word, faith comes how? Hearing what? So when I put my faith in that scripture, I realize that ain't nobody going to change it. Ain't nobody going to dilute it. I believe that God's going to heal me. So in the process of me going to my healing and using my faith, 1 Peter 2, 24, I'm going to worship my way through. Because faith says, give God what glory for what he's what has done. So I properly apply my faith to when I get sick or when I have to go to the hospital. I properly apply my faith that by his stripes I'm what? Yeah. So my faith is in what he says, not in me saying I have faith. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? I got some more examples to give you. You go pray for somebody. You can sit there and pray all day. But your faith has to be in the scripture. The Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 17, anoint them with oil. And the prayer of faith shall what? Heal them. And if they commit any sins, it shall be what? Forgiven of them. My faith is not in my ability. My faith is not in me saying I got faith. I put my faith where? In God's word. I have to stand on it even when it don't feel good, when it's uncomfortable, when I, when I don't, my body is aching with pain. I, you have to learn to put yourself in a place where nobody going to move you. Even like this woman, she couldn't be moved when Jesus said, I come but to the house of Israel and he said, I, 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 I don't I don't give with the house unto dogs. And he didn't pay her no mind, but she wouldn't move because she believed his words. He, she believed that if he said it, that her daughter would be made whole and free from the vexation of the devil. 
Her faith was in believing what God says. The problem with most Christians is you don't believe what God says and you use your own faith trying to fix a spiritual problem that will show up and manifest, manifest itself in a physical way, but you can't believe God for it because you keep using your natural sight. Amen. You quit. You complain. You talk about your problems. You talk about your issues. When the word of God says, Man, put my faith where? In God's word. Why do I put my faith in God's word? Go over to Hebrews 11 and 6. Your Bible should fall open to it because I, I, I teach it consistently. My, my faith is in, 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 in God's word. When my wife was going through, I put my faith in his word. I put my faith in what he said. By his stripes, we are what? I asked God, was my wife going to die? I asked him. Because when I go to the hospital, I ask God, is this unto death? He said, no. But my faith for her healing was not in me having faith for myself to believe God. My faith was in the scripture. Amen. My faith was in the scripture that God was going to heal her. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. How do I know this? How in the world can I put this into practical application and walk in it when I find myself in a challenge, when I find myself in a, in a pickle and I have to I have to rely on God. Guess what? To do what? Sometimes somebody say the impossible. The impossible. Amen. Hebrews. Eleven and six. Boy, I love this scripture. It said, but without faith, it is what? Without faith is what? Impossible. To do what? So it's impossible to please God what? And what he means is it's impossible for God to answer your request when you don't believe his word or what it has said. My whole life, how do you know you say? Because his word said I was. Uh, not because you came up and cried and the pastor or somebody laid hands on you or because you quoted some scripture and said, "By you know, I believe that Jesus died on the cross of sin and rose again. It's more than that. You have to believe the word. The word said I was saved. The word said that I was forgiven. The word said my sin was washed away. The word said that I'm no more an old creature, but now I'm a new creature in who? Christ. The words, I don't care what you say about me. I know what the word say about me. I have faith what? In the word. But too many of you put your faith in people. Your whole life is dictated by what somebody says. You change your whole look, your lifestyle based on what somebody says. I don't like that dress. That dress don't look right on you. It don't? No. You go and change. What do you like? You may wear a dress, may look, may, you might like it, but nobody on the street may like it. If you like it, wear it because you like it. Not because somebody else had dictated to you on what pretty is. What is pretty? What's pretty? Who's beautiful? Who's handsome? Based on what? What's ugly? Based on what? Well, I know my definition of ugly is your attitude. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. But everybody looks beautiful to me. I don't, we don't put these labels on people or what's beautiful and what, you know, some of these people aren't beautiful. They just got patches all over the place. Whether the nose been patched, the butt been patched, the leg been patched, something been patched. <laughs> something been added to. And we don't use our faith. I use my faith now. I'm going to tell you, you, you ain't got to pray for money. You ain't got to pray for God. God, I pray you give me a financial blessing. Oh, I cried that so much, man. I'm telling you, I got, I got hundreds of stories to tell you. <laughs> I was going to bring in my booklet when my house was being foreclosed on. I failed sometimes. I was getting letters one at the other from the mortgage people. I ain't paid mortgage for almost seven months. I ain't had the money. I kept the lights on, credit card. How about food, credit card? Some people helped me. Some people gave to me. 
I would come home and told my wife, I said, well, you might as well prepare to move. I said, I don't know where we're going to put all this stuff. I got zero turn lawnmowers. I got tools all over the place. I got church chairs in the basement. Been there for who knows how long, brand new chairs. Maybe about a hundred something of them. I need to get them out of my basement. I don't even own my basement. Church do. I'm two days from foreclosure. Mm. The scripture real to me, my God shall supply all my needs. I fail sometimes. I thought I really trusted God. One day for foreclosure, they sent me a book, all the homes in it, going for foreclosure. Page three, there's my house. Do you got faith, Pastor Cook? I had to learn it. I had to learn it. I had to learn it. What I'm going to do? We've been in the house for 20 years. We're going to lose it. Where are we going to live at? I don't know. We're going to find an apartment somewhere. Maybe we can find a house to rent. I had all these option B's and C's and D's. The word of God was far away from my mind. I went in my room and broke down. God said, don't cry to me. Believe me at my word. My God shall supply all my needs for I care for you. I wasted a lot of time pity partying, trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. I tried working jobs. I did. I got, two, I got a job. That was a job. I, didn't work. God didn't call me there. The day before I get foreclosed on, the day before it goes to court, Upper Marlboro, I ain't got to be there. I get an envelope in the mail. Last day. Your modification been approved. I fell down on my knees and repented for not living by faith and trusting God in his word. I cried so much that I didn't have faith enough to believe what God said because I was trying to fix it on my own. I was trying to do it based on my own strength. And each time I try to do it on my own, I broke. I broke. And I went to the scripture. And without faith, it's impossible to do what? For he that cometh to God must believe that he what? And that he is a reward of them that what? Lifestyle. I started believing God in his word. Philippians. Remember Philippians 2, I think it is. And my God shall what? How much of your need? Now, come on. How much of your need? What that includes? Everything. Everything. That includes my children. That includes my job. That includes my health. That includes everything. So I decided to die. I decided to no longer rely on me, but rely on God. I decided to trust God at his word, no matter if it hurts, no matter if it's uncomfortable, no matter if it doesn't feel good. I said, I'm not going to move, God, because if I lose this house, you'll give me another one. I'm standing on your word. I don't care what happens. And God begins to do the miraculous. What was I trusting in? I was trusting in what he said. You have to put your trust in what he said. You can't just say you have faith. Your faith has to be in what he said, not what your neighbor said, not what somebody else said. But guess what? A prophet can lie to you, but the word can't lie to you. The word can't lie. We've been using our faith wrong. God don't tell you. Listen, if you need a job, God said, I'll bless you. Just obey me. If you need a job, just ask me. You have not because you what? When you ask, he said, you don't ask to consume it upon your own what? Lust. 
But God wants you to take care of your family. God wants you to be able to pay your bills, but he wants he want you to trust him for it. So I learned my whole life is dictated. How, how, how I treat my wife is dictated on the word of God. I live by faith. It said a husband ought to love his wife as Christ loved the church. I apply that. I apply that. I apply what? The word. My faith is in what? The word. The Bible tells me if I treat her the way that Jesus treated the church, he said, guess what? She's going to be blessed and I'm going to be what? Blessed. You won't apply the word. You have to apply the word. Your faith has to be in the word. It can't be in your selfishness of always wanting. God, give me a house. God, give me a car. God, God, give me clothes. God, give me more money. God, give me a raise. No, no. Go to work. Make yourself valuable. Do the work. And guess what? God said, I'll give you influence. And he said, guess what? And when I give you influence, they're going to give you a raise when nobody else is getting a raise. You're not going to work for you. He lets you enjoy the money that you get on your check, but you're going to work to glorify God. You have to change your way of thinking. Your faith is in his word. Your children ain't going right. My wife said, don't talk about my children no more. They got mad with me. <laughs> they got mad with me. You talked about us. You said it. Yeah, I said it. But I, I didn't mean it that way because I know that the Bible says if I serve God, he's going to save my whole household. What my faith is in? My faith is not in how they live it. My faith is not in what they're doing. My faith is in what God has promised me. God promised he's going to save my whole household. You got to stand on that. I don't care how they act. I don't care what they do. I don't care if they don't go to church. I don't care if they don't pray. You stand on that word. You stand on that word and you keep doing what God called you to do. Does that make sense to you? We've been living wrong. Amen. We've been living wrong. Listen, he told the people in Deuteronomy chapter 8, 28, when they came out of Egypt, he said, look, if you do this, he said, your baskets will be filled. He said, he said, your, your womb shall not be barren. He said, I'll bless you in the city, outside the city. He said, I'll bless you if you obey me. And then the next chapter over, he said, but if you don't obey me, these curses shall come upon you. God ain't putting no curses upon the New Testament church. He ain't got no curse on you. God said he chastised those that he what? He ain't cursing you no more. He whooping your tail now. He carrying you through challenges to build you up. You keep fighting the God that's trying to get you to see life. You keep trying to live life according to your parameters. I ain't got no parameters no more. I don't have my own desires. I live by desires of God and his word. And guess what? As I do that, guess what? He began to bless me. Somebody say hallelujah. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. Somebody say hallelujah. Faith in what? Faith in what he says. Come on, church. Faith in what he says. God said, come unto me, all you that laid in and heavy laden, I will give you what? You ain't got to go see a psychiatrist. You ain't got to tell somebody, well, you know, I'm going through and this happened when I was a kid. And, I, you know, I think it affected me, you know, and, and my adulthood life is all messed up. OK, I know you got mental illness, but the Bible said, come unto me. All you that are dealing with mental illness, all you that got heaviness of mind, all of you that have been frustrated by life. And he said, when you come to me and believe me in my word, you shall find rest for your what? Soul. That's what needs rest your soul. So my faith is in that. So when I find myself in situations, guess what? I go to God. I don't go to people. I don't start telling, well, you know, I'm going through. I just want to share this with somebody and pull my heart out. You, know, you done pulled your heart out and you're still in the same situation. Come on, you done pulled your heart out to your best friend. You done told him what you're going through. You done told him what your husband did. You done told him how lonely you are. You done pulled your heart out. Ain't nothing changed. And I'm telling the truth. When you want change, come unto me, all you that laden and heavy laden, and you shall find rest for your what? 
That's the only way you're going to find rest. You got to believe God at his what? Word. Number 2319. You know what it said. Put it on the board for me, Forrest. Number 2319. I'm going to tell you, you can bet on this. You can put your life on this. But the word of God will bring forth what God said it will bring forth when you put your faith in it. He said, if you say unto this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. He said, it shall be so if you believe it. Somebody say hallelujah. I put my faith, what? In his word. His, who, what moves the mountain? You think really your faith moves the mountain? Your faith ain't moving no mountain. What moves the mountain? My faith in his word. His word moves the mountain. Somebody say hallelujah. My faith is in his word. People say, what you got faith in? His word. How you know going to be healed? His word. What's going to restore my, my, my broken heart? What's going to heal me from my past? His word. But the Bible says, God said, I take your sins and when you repent, I throw them to the sea of forgiveness as far as the east is from the west. I don't care what you know about me. I don't care what you know about my past. God said he don't remember my sin. So guess who more important to me than you? God. You got to start busting people out. Who made you God over me? I believe his word. If he say my sins forgiven, guess what? Are you forgiven? Why are you forgiven? Because the word says so. Come on, tell your neighbor. Well, y'all act like y'all scared to say it. You know, I did something last night. I don't know, I don't know about that. Woo Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. And God said, I'll heal your what? Woo! Y'all should be happy. You should walk out of here today and say, Woo, I'm going to stop trusting in me, boy. That's a whole lot of weight off my shoulder. Well, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to learn how to live my life. I got, I've been frustrated. I've been frustrated with my husband. I've been frustrated with my children. I've been frustrated with my job. Listen, you go to school and you go to school for four years. Listen, you go to elementary school, six years. You go to high school, three years. You go to college, another four years. Somebody say hallelujah. All that time you spent in college. And then you come out to get a job and you're unhappy. Everybody come to your graduation. You done graduated college. You done got your degree. You got your helmet on. Man, you're sitting in there with your family. You're showing your degree. Look what I got. I got. I graduated college. Woo. I graduated. And then two weeks later, man, you are so unhappy and displaced with life. You thought the degree was going to turn into more money. And your, and your boss said, oh, good job. Well done. Don't I get another grade? What about a step? What about a half a step? Good job. Well done. Your trust is not in man. Your boss is not your God. He's been placed there by God to help you. Guess what? To influence the nation with what? His word. What do you live? The word. Come on, tell your neighbor. Say, you got to live the word. Tell him, you got to have faith in the word. Because man, when trouble hit, you better be able to put your faith in the word. Say the word says this. The word says this. The word says this. The word says this. Do you know whenever a person came to Jesus, she didn't go to Jesus and say, and say I believe. No, Jesus was the word in flesh. Amen. So whenever they came, what did they go to? The word in flesh. When they believed, though, when the centurion knew his servant was sick, where did he go? To the word in flesh. He said, but speak the word only and my servant shall be what? But see, y'all want to hear something else. Y'all want to go on. Y'all want to get on the view and talk about it. I want to get on the view and have them discuss my situation. I want to go on. What's that? What's that guy used to come on TV? And I, I think it's just a shame for people to go on there and, and air out all they mess and who they messing with. I'm having the coming out party. I'm coming out. And what, I, can't, I can't even think of the guy's name. It was such a stupid show. There's a couple of them on there y'all probably watch. One guy was Wilco. Wilco, whatever his name is. And they come on there and he said, I got something to tell you. I ain't good. Christians don't do that. Christians we live by what? The word of God. That's where your fault is. That's why you're not happy coming to church. That's why coming to church for you is a choice. Oh, I got to go to church today. I don't feel like going to church. I should stay home and lay in bed. Your situation ain't changed. You're still confused in your mind. You can't sleep at night. You, every relationship you get in turns out to be toxic. Every person you meet, he starts off nice. She starts off nice. After the first few weeks, he say, 
What about us getting together? You know, you want to stay over tonight and have breakfast in the morning? <laughs> and you say, breakfast in the morning? Whew, I ain't had nobody cook for me in a long time. <laughs> and you compromise. You compromise the word of God and wonder why you ain't going nowhere. And then you want to try to take my joy. You want to bring me all down. You want to get me in my office and dump on me. And, and the whole problem is we wouldn't need marriage counseling. We wouldn't need any kind of counseling if you would obey the word of God and put your faith in it. Your marriage will fix itself if you obey the word. Oh, I ain't get no amens on that one. <laughs> I, I ain't get I ain't get no um, no amens on that one. Like, you keep fighting your husband. Hey, when you gonna grow up? And, and when you gonna become a man? And, and when you gonna when you gonna start taking care of me and taking more notice of me? Don't you know my birthday? When my birthday? When my birthday? When we get married? When we get married? When the first place we met? Well, well you don't remember none of that kind of stuff. Your whole life is jacked up. You don't treat me like you used to. You know how many times a man and a woman heard that? You don't treat me like I used to. Because you ain't obeying the word of God. You, you want, this, 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 this don't happen. This just don't happen by accident. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. How do I know when I put my faith in God's word? Do you know there's times that I put my faith in God and, and nothing happened for months on end? Weeks on in, I done prayed, I done heard, y'all done told me, I done heard people tell me, I done prayed, ain't nothing happened. It's not supposed to yet. Amen. You ain't ready for that one yet. Amen. It's not supposed to yet. Who determines when it happens? God. Not your tears, not your pride, not your belly. Well, I ain't serving God no more, and I ain't going to church no more, and I, I'm, just, I'm just becoming an atheist and an agnostic, and I'm just going to be a narcissist, and I'm, I'm not even going to serve God no more. And guess what? Go ahead, because the situation is not going to get better. It's going to get worse. So what keeps me going? What keeps me vibrant? What keeps me loving my wife on a level that I cheat her? I'm always messing with her. I said, girl, I'm going to bust you right in your face. <laughs> She'd be like, go ahead. Because <laughs> we, we, we play around. We enjoy being together. Y'all make marriage hard. Amen. You know why you make it hard? Because you got these expectations that's even unexpectable for giving God himself to meet. If you live by the word of God, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have that problem. Because the Bible, when you get saved and you live by the word of God, it changed the whole dynamic of who you are. You start living like God. Somebody say hallelujah. You learn how to forgive. You learn how to not to bellyache, but go in your closet and begin to pray. I'm talking about using faith without telling anybody. You're facing a challenge right now. I'm telling you, don't tell nobody. Go in your closet and tell your father, which is in heaven, and he shall reward you how? How do I know that's even possible? Because God is not a man. He won't lie. He does things right. He's righteous. He's full of wisdom and might. He's not human. He don't operate by human capacity of thinking. He operates solely by his word. Come on, tell your neighbor. He works solely by his what? What he says, he said he could swear by no other, so he swear by himself. Let me get these last few scriptures, and we're going to get out of here. Neither the son of man that he should repent. God ain't going to repent for nothing he done. He God. Have he said it? I shall supply all your needs. The birds of the air neither toil nor spin, yet your heavenly father takes care of them. He said, oh, ye of little faith, when are you going to wake up and trust me? By his stripes, I'm healed. Doctor say I got cancer. Doctor say I got breast cancer. The doctor say I got, I got this. The doctor say I got that. Okay, I got it. But by his stripes, I'm what? Yeah. So when I come, guess what? I'm not going to live in a sickness, a, a, a pity party, a sickness. But when I come, I'm going to give him worship. When I home, I'm going to give him worship. When I go to the doctor, I'm going to give him worship. Whatever I do, I'm going to bring glory to his name. Because I realize what the word says. I realize I love God. I realize I'm saved. The Bible says if I, if I happen to die, to be asking for the body, be present with the what? Lord. Boy, y'all don't want to hear that. 
What about my house? What about, what about, what about this? What about that? When you die, nothing you can do about it. Matter of fact, when I get to heaven, I ain't gonna remember nothing. My wife will remember me. Yeah, that was my husband. Yeah, we were married for 42 years. You know, yeah, we were married. I'm in heaven going like, who? Who? Yolanda, who? Because ain't no marriage, no giving in marriage. Somebody say hallelujah. I know some women don't like that. No, when I get to heaven, I'm going to steal. Ain't no nagging in heaven. You can't follow me around in heaven. We'll be brothers and sisters in who? The Lord. You only married on earth. When you get to heaven, that's over. God is your husband. Amen. Guess what? <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So God says, has he said, shall he not do it? Or has he spoken? And shall he not make it what? Good. Shall he not make it what? Good. God will make whatever he says what? Good. Do you believe that? Yes. You walk out of here today, defeat is your choice. You choose to be defeated. You choose to live a life of oppression and living by your past. You choose to. When God said, I make all things what? New. I believe what the word said. All things are new. How I look at it. I've been praying, man. I'm telling you, I've been praying. And sometimes, man, it's months before I get an answer. I'm good with it. I'm good with it now. Somebody say hallelujah. Because I know, guess what? Uh, let me give you this right here. And, and then we're going to great. get out of here. But you gotta start applying the word. Tell you never you gotta apply the word. You, I mean, if you live by this word, it would change the whole dynamics of your life. You ain't gotta turn to I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it for you. It says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul says in 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man renew how? Day by day. For the for our light affliction, somebody say light affliction. Our light affliction is but for a moment. Somebody say, so but for a moment. My sickness is only but for what? It's only for a moment, people. I'm telling you. That's what the word says. I'm only saying what the word says. It's only for what? A moment. It works for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to what? Glory. To whose glory? God's glory. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. My sickness is what? Come on now. My sickness is what? My cold is what? My food is what? It's all what? I don't have no job is what? As long as you trust in God, you don't trust in God, it's going to be for a long time. Somebody say hallelujah. They said it was temporary. Do you believe the word? Do you believe the word? Do you, do you know I'm going to heaven? You know the Bible. I'm just believing what the Bible says. You see, you can only kill me once. After you kill me, there's nothing more you can do. Somebody say hallelujah. Why we fell at life? Because you accept socialist issues, socialist problems. You, you, want, you want a government structure in your life to give you some structure when God says, I have given you my structure, which is not like the world. It's not according to the world. It's not according to their philosophy. I'm asking you to trust me when you don't see no way out. When it looks impossible, I'm asking you to trust me because I said it. Let's close with this. Your child comes to you. You done had it done. Your grandchild come to you and say, hey. Say, hi. You say, hey, how you doing? I'm going to get you something for your birthday. What do you want? An Xbox. Really? You know how much that costs? Yeah, I want an Xbox. What else you want? I want, a, I want one of those stand-up scooters. Electric. You know how much they cost? No. So you tell that kid that. And that kid don't have no doubt at all that you're going to do it. They believe you're going to get it. And they'll ask you now, you know, my birthday's coming up. They, they go around with expectation. Tell me about, come on now, I'll be honest. Then your kid tell you something, they say they want something, and they walk around, they don't think about it, they don't, they don't even think you can't do it. They know you can do it. They know you're going to make it happen. Somebody say hallelujah. They know, man, ain't no failure in your words at all. You're going to make it happen. Mommy, I'm going to get my nails done today. A little girl first get her nails done and she first get her hair done. The excitement on their faces when they walk in, they walk in with you like an adult. 
Your daughter getting her hair done, her nails done, and you told her for her birthday, I'm going to let you get it. You can't get no tattoo, but you can get your nails done, you get your feet done, and you get your hair done, and they walk with excitement. They believe without a shadow of doubt, you're going to do it, you're going to make it happen, and they go through life happy. And they go to school, and my mama's going to take me to get my hair done, my nails done. When I come, I'm going to wear sandals so you can see my toes. God wants you to have that kind of attitude because he said it. Come on, tell your neighbor, because he said it. My faith is not in my faith. My faith is not saying I have faith. My faith is in what he said. I put all my faith in what? Last scripture. Um, yeah. Stay in the same verse, chapter 11. Go down to number seven and we're going to close with this one. Thank you, Forrest. It said, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Powerful. Being warned of God was going to rain, never saw rain. Yet, moved with fear or reverence. Amen. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. A hundred, you know how many years it took him to build the ark? A hundred and twenty. 120 years, he built an ark, never rained. The earth, water came out of the earth, never rained. Yet he believed God at his what? God told Abraham, leave your family and go. And I'm going to make you a father of what? Many nations. And guess what? He went not knowing where he was going based on what? What God said to him. Why are you moving? What has God said to you? What God say to you? He said, be ye holy for I am well, why would he call you to be holy if he didn't give you the tools to do it? You just don't believe his word. Faith is not 12 steps or any type of man-made doctrine or formulas. Do you believe what God said? God said, I'll give you happiness. I'll take your pain and give you joy. My whole life, my whole life is now dictated by the word of God. I live by the word of God. I see what it says. He said, be ye holy for I'm holy, saith the Lord. He said, turn from your wicked ways. He said, come out for God on darkness and come into the light. I start obeying the word. I start living the word. You know, I'll share with you real quick. My mind used to get attacked by all kinds of thoughts. I go to sleep, I get thoughts, nasty thoughts. I got tired of it. It just vexed me that I can't even sleep. I couldn't even control my own thinking. Preacher kept saying, cast down every imagination, every high thing, exalt itself again. I, ca I cast it down in the name of Jesus. I cast it down in the name of Jesus. I kept casting out. I was doing what the word said, but I, I wasn't obedient in all earth. I wasn't forgiving like I should. I wasn't loving like I should. So the word don't work when you don't obey. Come on, tell you that the word don't work when you don't obey. So I started living by faith and I started changing that. All of a sudden, now I take authority over my mind. Satan comes to take authority over him. He has no place. He has no right to bring thoughts to my mind. He has no right to come in my mind and remind me of my past. He has no right. I remind him of that. I live by faith. In what? God's word. Today, when you walk out of here, you can live by your faith. You can live by what you think and what you want. Until you die to yourself and die to your ambitions and die to your dreams, you will never fulfill what God wants really for you because what he wants for you is better than what you want for yourself.